We're heading back to the Renaissance and not the Renaissance Fair. Welcome to Bad at Board Game. Well, he's Bad at Board Games. My name is Brad Lake. And I'm Topher Ferguson. We're Bad at Board Games, so you don't have to be. Today, we're going to be talking about... Teletum. Tiletum. Or Teletum. It's something. It's something. I thought However it was a, you want to pronounce it. It's a made-up town in Europe. Kind of. It's kind of representing a modern-day town in Belgium. Really? Yes. I did not realize that. Yeah. Learning so. something new all the time. I'm not the brightest person in the bunch. Never said that. <laughs> <laughs> He's just bad at board games. He is quite smart in some aspects. Aww. I mean. That might be the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Yeah, and it really wasn't nice. Welcome to Southern Hospitality. <laughs> Bless your heart. Yeah, that's what I was waiting on. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around to the end where we discuss all the important things. Pros, cons. We are also going to go over the value rating. Is this experience worth your money? And we will also discuss our BGG ratings. So that'll help you determine, do you want this on your shelf? Tove, tell us a little bit about Tiletum. Yes. So this is a tea game. It is designed by Daniel Tashini and Simone Luciani. It is published by Board and Dice. Fantastic designers and a, a game publisher that we just have fallen in love with. Their games are fantastic. But we have bias, so just realize that. We do, and <laughs> let's be honest, if you know anything about this channel, you know that I am a Eurogamer through and through, so that might be a little bit of bias as well. Mm -hmm. um, but the game itself, if you're not familiar with Teletum at all, it takes place in the Renaissance. You are merchants, you are traveling throughout the streets of Europe, attending fairs and building monuments and buildings and kind of just working through this idea of becoming the best merchant and housing some of the best noble peoples while staying in the king's favor. There you go. So. The appearance, it's brown, it's Euro. It's and beautiful. I, I actually like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wasn't ready for you to say that. I was ready to fight you on that Yeah, one. no, I actually like it. It's supposed to be this old map like you would think of, like, you know, that you don't have anymore, right? That that faded paper, you know, ruffling at the edges and curling and things like that. Um, I like it. They have enough of a pop in the saturation of colors. They're muted deep maroons and blues and like a gold but it works with the the board and the theme and then the the wooden pieces that you have pop they're bright and vibrant colors so i like it i think it looks nice i think the components are are decent you know eagle griffin lucerta is like 10 out of 10 you know this is somewhere right in the middle it's above average you know it's it it's well done so I like it. I think the appearance works very well for what the game is. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I, I really do. Um, the gameplay of this game is, it, it's a lot, but it boils down to just a few actual mechanics. Um, ideally, to begin with, we're going to talk about the dice. Um, the way that you take your actions in this game is a dice mechanic. You're rolling your dice. You are then using those dice for two, for two things, to collect your resources and to find your movement points or your action points. And you are going to be selecting through a rondelle that is going to be changing as we progress throughout this game. Mm -hmm. The game only lasts for four rounds, although there are six options here. So you're not going to kind of get the best of everything in the game, but it is going to be changing as you go throughout the different years or seasons, as you will, playing throughout the game. 
Uh, as you go through the game, you're also going to be collecting contracts and trying to pursue those contracts. You're going to be having set collections in order to be able to do the things you need to do on the board. You're also going to be building up suits as you work through your actual tableau that's in front of you. Now, they're not suits, they're people, um, but they are going to be different and you're going to have to be matching things up to be able to work on your player boards. So those are kind of the, the main focuses of the mechanics. Mm -hmm. It also goes into some end game bonus scoring. They're very minor. There's not a lot going on with that. Um, but the movement on the board, the building of the actions, the finding favors and the king's eyes, those are all the movement action points that you're going to have throughout the game. Yeah. And kind of getting into our story, I like board and dice games. I, Terracotta Army was one that I went and made sure I got their um, their game at, at Gen Con. And, you know, it just kind of has steamrolled from there. And there's a lot of similarities. So if you like those games, you're probably going to like to let them. It, it's, it's a good Euro. It's good mechanics. And I personally... It's nice to have some games where you control when the game ends, but in a Euro game, I don't want it to go five hours. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like the fact that it's four turns and then you're done. And I felt like there was enough of an engine. Now, I might not have played it great, but I felt like there was enough of an engine that it was fun, right? You know, like I don't like the games where I'm like, can't ever get an engine going. And then there's some where it's like, it just is like, well, what's the point? It, it's just, you know, point salad at some point. Although, actually, got way more points than we did <laughs> on this game. But, like, I don't know. There was something about it that it just, it, it had a nice balance to it. Would you agree? Yeah. Or Yeah, I agree with that. It, it's it's interesting. You know, thinking what is different about this game versus some of the other tea games that we've played or similar Euro games, engine building, dice placement style games, one thing I think that's that stuck out to me was my initial frustration, which is a good thing. I'm not talking about I'm upset at the game, but with Euro games, I've learned you cannot do everything. And I want to do everything. I want to be good at everything. I want to try to accomplish all of the goals, but you can't. And what's unique about Teletum versus some of the other games is you only have like 12 turns. So you've got four rounds or four years, and each of those rounds, every player is only taking three turns. And so you cannot do everything on this board. You are very limited by that. But the amount of things that you can do in 12 turns is impressive. Mm -hmm. And how you pull that all together makes us a very tight game. And that's, that's what we learned with playing with Ashby, who destroyed us, even though we... We did well. I thought we, did, we got over 100 points. We did. And Ashby got over 200. So, you know, there is that. Um, and when we say we got over 100, we were on the, hey, we just got over 100. Yep. So. <laughs> we felt we good well. at the end. We did. <laughs> that, that we did. That we did. I, I do. I, I think they've manipulated these different mechanics out of a lot of different games. I think that's another thing that, that at least maybe I saw. I don't know if you did. There's there's points of this game that make me feel like, oh, this is just like Terracotta Army, the selection of this. Yeah. But it's not like Terracotta Army because of how they're pulling in the dice. Yeah. You know, it, it's different then. Mm -hmm. It's not just another T game. Yeah. It's different then. And that's that's one of the things I like about it. Yeah. So kind of getting into our pros, I like, I really do like a dice action selection game. <laughs> Like, um, Obelisk of the Sun, which is another one of their tea games. Like, there's something about roll a bunch of dice, place them around to force you to be like, oh, I wish we had more ones or sixes, whatever. There's something about that I like. Um, and then those numbers are the inverse of the actions you get. So with this wheel over here, if you get a six, you're going to get six resources of the color of dice. So pink matches food and gray, two gray, we'll get into the con, mm -hmm. two different color grays, which are too close together, um, match something else and so forth. But if you get a six, then you only get one action of that. And, you know, you might want like three actions to move around or something. And then, but if you take the three, it's not on the action you want. Like it, it's this, if it, it's like, 
okay, we know you want to do different things, but we're not going to let you. <laughs> That's very much it. And I, there's something I like about that. You know, it's not worker placement. It's just I, I, I like that tension. You've got some cool things you can do. Now, which one do you want? Yeah. So. And I, we noticed that in the game we played, I collected a lot of resources, but I felt like I couldn't move around the board to get what I needed. Mm -hmm. I did. I just barely got around the board to do what I want to do, but I had a ton of resources. You were struggling for resources, but you did a lot of great actions and things. I Yeah, I went church collecting, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, but I didn't unlock my tableau. Mm -hmm. And then Ashby was moving around like a madman, unlocking his tableau, and that allowed him to like, it, you know, he his engine was even more powerful. Like, mm -hmm. I think your engine was more powerful because mm -hmm. the way he was doing things, my engine wasn't as powerful, but I was trying to like, I went, I was enjoying going and hunting for churches, mm -hmm. right? But then it wasn't unlocking the power of my tableau, which I, ran, I feel, I'm like, oh, well, I need to change. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are the pros do you have? Oh my goodness. I, I have a ton of pros actually about the game itself. Um, the diversity and the tightness. I know I mentioned that already, but the 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 points of this game, you have to do certain actions and you can do them in different orders. How you're playing around the board, if you're just moving and then building something, you're going to accomplish it. But you do have an opportunity to kind of get there in different ways mm -hmm. that while it's still a very tight game, you can gain some little bonuses that give you a little bit of a tweak that can let you go into a separate area. That's what Ashby was doing. Yeah. Ashby was going for the bonus tiles, I think, before he was going for the let's just go after this first fair. Yeah, they have, there's, there's individual goals, objective points each for each year. round, mm -hmm. right? As well as at the end of the game, like most Euro games. Yeah. But he was able to do both by going after like a bunch of chits on the board mm -hmm. that went onto his tableau. So where I feel like I was playing and mitigating the game, or I was going and I was playing the game to just get the objective, he was mitigating some of the, I'm not moving around doing what I need to do here because I have, oh, look, this bonus and this bonus and this bonus and this bonus. And that is one of the aspects of the tightness. The other aspect of the tightness that I love about this game is that similar to Castles of Burgundy and some other games, whenever you collect a tile, whatever that tile may be that's on this board, a contract, a uh, a bonus, whatever it might be, they go into your onto your individual player board and you only have four slots. And then you have to do something with it. And that is another great stress mechanic. It adds a frustration that's positive in these games. That's what makes Euros and these T games sing. You're not just going to go blown away doing whatever you want to do. You have to play, oh, I've got another great contract I can pick up, but wait, I can't do that because I got this that I've been saving, a bonus that I'm going to have to use right now because I got I got to have the slot. Yeah. And that's that's a fun part of it. Yeah. I there's I don't know that you have your merchant where you're moving around and that merchant's the only one that can build houses in certain towns and that's restricted. Mm -hmm. And then you have your architect, which is the only one that can build pillars. But for both of those, you start out with a couple, but then you quickly realize to unlock the other wooden pieces you have that go on the main board, you have to collect contracts and you have to collect people to build houses. And like, it's, I enjoyed it. I, you know, I, we, I think we could go on about each section. Um, I don't know if there's anything specific. I like the king track. Um, I can't, you know, like, I don't know. I, there, there's just a lot I liked about this game. Yeah. And they did a pretty good job of having a little bit of a catch-up mechanic where if you can't do certain actions, there's a little bit of a freebie that you're given to. And I think that's another thing that I know I relied on at least once in the game um, that kind of allows somebody who is at a point of only having terrible dice to be able to pick from here. Mm -hmm. That's not giving what they need. They can still have a little bit of a catch-up. Um, and you see that especially down here with like the contracts or being able to swap out resources one for another or using some of your gold to change the value of some of the dice that's up here to be able to get a different action. So it's, you know, there's a little bit of a catch up that that really is nice. Mm -hmm. So so I'm going to get into my cons and somebody should be colorblind at board and dice because there's a light gray 
and a dark gray. And one of them goes to a blue chit. <laughs> and one of them goes to a dark gray chit. <laughs> and they need to be further apart. <laughs> Yeah, in and, the color spectrum. And by light gray, <laughs> dark gray, and blue, let's be honest, it's a lighter gray, slightly darker gray, and a steel gray. Yeah. <laughs> so. it's like, the pink's fine. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. But they should have changed some of the other colors. <laughs> that's a big one. And for somebody that's not color, I'm blind as a bat, but I'm not colorblind. And uh, we we all struggle with that. Yeah, I was like, oh, wait a minute. That's, oh, that's, that's string, or that's, you know, like, I don't know. It was just... That that was uh, that was a little silly. I thought <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you have when you have a nice pastel yellow, you have a nice pastel pink, and then you know the green, and then you have these other colors that are too similar. <laughs> I hundred percent agree with that. Yeah. So what are we going to talk about? Con that's so that's a con. Yeah, I was gonna say, can I talk about some one of my cons? Absolutely. I hope you do. King's track. Don't like it. Really? Don't like it at all. And it's not that I don't like it because fresh, I'm frustrated with it or it bothered me in the game. It's not needed. Mm. It's simply not needed. Mm. And I don't think... I I tried to play it a lot because I thought I needed to mitigate the um, negatives that are being drawn up. I forget what these tiles are actually called. Um, but as you play each, each round favor. and each season... Yeah, King's Favor. Each season of each year, so each of your turns... You're flipping over these tiles, and most of them are negative. Some are zero. Most of them are sending you backwards, which means at the end of the year, you're going to get negative victory points. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my goodness, I can't afford to lose four victory points. But the game ended with Ashby having over 200, and we had over 100. Like, that's not yeah. needed. It's really not needed. Yeah, it's going to give you a few positives, but I, yeah. it's not needed. I don't like it. I, the game would have been just as good, if not maybe a little bit better, in my opinion, without it. Mm. I don't know, you might disagree with that. But. Well, and I guess I want to play it now again with that in mind. Because mm -hmm. it didn't frustrate me. Like, and it, The King's Track is, determines who goes first, second, third, and fourth within each round. But you get the get points or lose points based on where you're at in the King's Track as well. Um, I hadn't thought about it that way because I kind of liked it. Okay. But now that you've made <laughs> the point about the number of points you do or don't lose in the grand scheme of a point salad ish mm -hmm. game, you're probably right. Yeah. I just didn't think of it that way. I was thinking too micro level and not looking at the whole. I didn't want, you could lose 10 points every round. That would be 40 points, but we were never that low. Well, and I don't know how you can get there. And maybe there's an advanced rule that changes it. And I miss that. But. If at the end of every year, so every round you're flipping over a coin and that coin could be zero or negative points. So you move. Everybody moves that many points. At the end of the year, you do your point change and then everybody who's in the negative goes back to zero. You, yeah. So it's not like you're collectively getting larger and larger and larger negatives. You're going back to zero. Now, the positives are Damn. staying at the positive. So maybe that's where it's going to be a big difference. But all of us were playing this. So all of us were about even in this. Mm -hmm. Now, I do like the battle for first player. Yeah. But I think that could have been put Somewhere into something else. else. Yeah. 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 So, no, that, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, I'm trying to think of other negatives. I, so, yes, negative. Setup is a pain. There is so many chances. And it, it's definitely a board and, a dice, board and dice thing. There's no insert tray. There is no way to separate these stuff. I have a whole bunch of Ziploc bags, which you will see B-roll of me dumping that on a table right now. It, the setup is a pain. It will take you not the longest time you've probably ever had it in setting up a game, but it is definitely not short. This is on the high end of setting up a game. That is one con. And I've got another one if you don't have one. No, go ahead. You're on a roll. The run. other one is board and dice. Please start giving me player aids for all your icons preach they, <laughs> all of them they have them all in the back of the book but i need them sitting there for each player i went through and printed out some here's the steps like give me a give me a little player aid that's this big on one side it tells me do this do this do this per turn to clean up and and start and then on the back side all your icons 
because every game you have is a different icon and they're so different they don't carry over from one game to the next. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Give me a player aid. It doesn't cost that much. Everybody needs to have a player aid. Like every game needs to have a player aid. That's yes. 100%. <laughs> yes. But uh, to your credit and to somebody's credit, I don't know if you're watching this or who you are, somebody made one and put it on BGG. So at least there is one there, but we shouldn't have to go to BGG to get it. But not for the icons. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. I was just the yeah. like, here's here's the clean, here's the startup, here's the cleanup, here's your things you can do on your mm -hmm. turn. Like, at least I had that, and I, but I had to go and find it and print it off. Yeah. So that would be much mm -hmm. preferred. So preferred. Do you have any other cons? The only other con that I can think of is, and, and this might be hit or miss for you. I know it's hit or miss for other gamers. The end game scoring is very minor. I mean, there's things that you can get with it, but there's it. It almost seems to me like there's not a whole lot of places to get a lot of points. And at the same time, there's some fiddly places to get points that maybe could be put to better use somewhere else. Um, I don't mind point salad games that get into the very high numbers. I don't mind that at all. I kind of like the end goal. I like to play to an end goal. And I feel like with this game, and this is a little bit different than some Euros, is you're playing to the first year's goal, the second year's goal, the third year's goal, the fourth year's goal, and then, okay, maybe there's a couple things left over at the very end of the game. It's not a, hey, this is going to be a very good thing for me to go get. Let me work towards it. It's oh. a do year one, then two, then three, then four, and then if you've got some extras, there's a few extra points, but it's not going to be huge. I would disagree with that. Okay. The multiplier of the houses times the pillars is a massive amount. If you get them put up, yeah. Yeah, but if you don't get them... Mm -hmm. That's like 25 or 30. That's a lot. That's but a lot. is it How worth... There? One, two, three, It can be four, like 25. Six point. times... That's like 30 okay, so points. so 30 points. Yeah. If you get them. But depending on what your goals are here, you may not be able to put out that many houses or, or pillars because you're working towards these goals. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, it's not a bad thing, but I like to play to the end goal. And I felt there's so few points or so, so few actions you can take that... I want to play a long-term strategy sometimes, and you're not going to get that with this game. But with that said, I still love the game. So, yeah. yeah. So let's get into the weight rating. Where is this in the Euro game weight yeah. of things? This is going to be a little bit towards the higher end of complexity, but we're not getting up above a four. This is a, a 3.33 according to, to BGA or BGG. Um, I, I agree with that. I probably initially thought this is a 3.5. I think it's a three in terms of how it plays, but it's a 3.5 because of how you have to mitigate so few action points and make the best out of it. And that's where it gets challenging is the strategy play with the game. Yeah, I would probably stick it more toward a 3.5. Mm -hmm. um, th the bad thing about BGG is you're either, it's not a three. No, it's not. And so I would, you know, when I pick one through five on BGG's rating, I'm going to put it at a four but it's not a four either. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's, you know, you split the difference, but I don't, I think some people who probably play a ton of Euro games think, oh, this is an easy Euro game. It's not the easiest Euro game. This is harder than, than um, Castles of Burgundy. Oh, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so this is, and we've played easier Euro games than this. So I think this is three and a half. Yeah. My opinion. It's, it's definitely one of the easier of the T games that I've played. And like I said, the mechanics of it work quickly and easily. You can pick that up pretty quick, and that is easy. But it is a very tight, thinky game, and that's that's bringing it up. So, I don't know. 3.33, I think, is a little lower than it actually technically is. 3.5 is was my initial thought, and I'm going to stick with that, too. Yeah. So, on to our value rating. So, this game has an MSRP of $60. And if this were $100, I would tell you it's a value rating between 1 and 5 of a 1. It's not worth paying $100 for. If this were $20, I would say it's a value of five. It's like, yeah, you get a chunky, crunchy Euro game for 20 bucks. Yeah, get it all day. So the MSRP is $60. I don't recommend paying that. It is sitting at miniature market right now for $42. It's out of stock. Somebody's trying to sell it on eBay for $180. Do not pay that. Wait. <laughs> Please wait. <laughs> this is... For $42 is a solid Euro game experience. Now, I would, I, I would say this is a four out of five, in my opinion. I don't think it's like astounding, 
But like for forty dollars, Castles of Burgundy was fifty. Mm-hmm. You know, typically, and you can get on sale and stuff. So this is right around, in my opinion, where some of these games are. That's also why you don't get a tray. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's why some of the complaints I have. I would rather get this for forty two dollars and then maybe make some inserts or put them in bags or just deal with it to have something because this isn't going to be played. You know, a hundred times. Mm-hmm. So I'd rather have it cheaper to be able to get this to the table when and where I want. Mm-hmm. So. You know, con pros and cons. Yeah, forty two is definitely a, a higher value for sixty. Sixty, I might put it at a three. Might it, it's mm-hmm. a little like I pu- I paid full price for Terracotta Army, right? Mm-hmm. I like Terracotta Army better than this. For me, I like this. There's a lot of similarities, but I like it. You get some miniatures. I like it's easier to put out, pull out. Mm-hmm. I just I I prefer that one to this one. So, but. I haven't thought about comparing them yet. Terracon Army. We'll probably have to do all the T games or board and yeah. dice games and do like a. See where do we rate them? Our top, our yeah. top ten or seven or five or however many they are. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'm what, with you. So, what's your BGG rating? Yes. So my rating takes into account a couple things. I think this is a little bit more accessible of a heavier weight euro mm-hmm. to bring somebody into it. I think that's a huge positive that's giving me maybe a little bit more of a stock in it than maybe Terracotta Army that I think is a little bit more challenging in terms of bringing a newer player to it. Mm. Um, Plays relatively easy. There's a lot of analysis paralysis, though. So all of that factored into it with all my thoughts, 8.5. Wow. Yeah, I I like it. I I, I think you're going to be that high. No, I like it a lot. (laughs) I do like it a lot. The more I think about it, the more I want to pull this to the table over some other games. That's impressive. Yeah. That is very impressive. And let me factor in one part between Terracotta Army, since you brought that up. Mm -hmm. I think this is a little, this is a lot less fiddly than Terracotta Army. And I think it's a little bit simpler to see where selection takes place and the actions that come with them. Mm -hmm. Throw away the King's area. Um, it's, you know, Terracotta Army is fantastic, but I think this is a little less, a little less fiddly. I would completely disagree with that. <laughs> and but, that's why we're friends. <laughs> but I, I think it's, I think there's a lot of the, the fiddliness and the setting it up. Terracotta yes. Army is easier to set up than this. Okay. To me, there's a lot of fiddliness and all the little chits and moving things around and the stacks of, so that's where I would disagree. So my rating, I, I like this game. It's an eight. Okay. It's, I think this is okay. at least an eight. I think this is a great Euro game. I really do do like the game. We it took us a while to play this game. Mm-hmm. It didn't feel like it. It the t- time went like that. And when we looked at how long we'd been playing, we're like, oh crap. We finally finished the game. We're like, how many hours did it take us? <laughs> I don't want to tell you because it's past the hours on the box. But you know, like we were thinking and we were, I never felt like I was waiting on him. I really didn't, yeah. you know? And so it was so weird. It was like the, we played a three player. I enjoyed it at three players and it went by fast. I don't know how time just warped and boom, we were toward the end. I, I've played games that like, if I'd have played them that long, I'd have been like, kill me now. And even with, First time playing Analysis Paralysis, it still went by, took us time, but it still went by feeling pretty quick. Yeah. So, so that's, you know, I, it's an eight. I, I want to play it again. Mm-hmm. So there we go. Um, comment down below. Mm-hmm. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> how, do you, how do you pronounce it? That's, that's what I want to know. Type that out. How do you pronounce it? <laughs> Give us some comments. Talk to us. We like talking to you. Yeah. Have you played this? Would you consider this? Our review is probably different than other people's thoughts on the game. Mm-hmm. And so what do you what do you think? You agree, disagree? We'd love to hear that. We disagree a lot. And this this game apparently we do yeah. disagree a lot. Well, but and then we still have above eight ratings. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we are so in disagreement. <laughs> anyway. Thank you for watching. I hope you made it this far. And just remember, no matter how you play, whether it's solo, with family, or friends, enjoy whatever games you are bringing to the table. Have a great night. Bye.